All right. So now, um, one of the one questions that I got uh, besides the T-shirt was, how do I render wireframes in Maya? And to answer that question is, well, it's it's a very complex recipe of things that you can do, and there's about four different ways to do it. But I'll just give you a demo of this. Here's wireframes being rendered on my t-shirt. Okay? Showing you that you're not a complete hack by dragging, um, well, a million polygons within Maya and just rendering it out. People like the idea that you can render a very low poly frame and make it high poly looking and still want the belief that it is low poly. So you have to support that with showing them the wireframes. So here's my recipe. And you're like, good God. So now I'll put this recipe together for you. So what I'm going to do here is go down. Yeah, my thing's kind of acting buggy here. Let me launch my hyper shade again. There we go. Uh, blink slate too. That's good. So we're going to start out with a Lambert and go down and grab a few things off the buffet. This is with the middle mouse button. So middle mouse button, click a ramp out. Middle mouse button, click a condition out. And middle mouse button, click a sample info out. Okay, I need one more piece to the puzzle and that's a UV snapshot. How I do that is go to the object that I imported in UV Texture Editor, Polygons, UV Snapshot. Okay, I'm going to browse out and put this on the desktop. I'm going to call it UV Snap period TGA. Yes, I'll replace it. 2048 by 2048. Make sure it says period PG TGA here or it will not work. Will not work. Hit OK. Yes, I'll overwrite it. Okay, so what I need to do is import that in. How I do that is very simple. If I go tracing on to my desktop, you'll see UV snapshot period TGA. I'll get everything out of my way. Left click and drag. Also, I need that texture that I imported in. That's actually called file one in this case. That's the one that's on the actual shirt right now. So this is one, this is a Spider-Man this is the UV snapshot. Okay, now to reorganize this mess, the condition stays in the middle. This one goes here. The ramp goes over here. And the UV snapshot. gets put over here. All right. The UV snapshot is a true. Okay, so the conditions like this, true, false, and if it's a true, everything glows. So true, that it has a UV snapshot, middle mouse button, click and drag it over, and attach it to other, and go like this. Oh, middle mouse button, click and drag it, and go to if true. Sorry, that's easier, <laughs> a lot easier. Uh, this one, middle mouse button, click and drag it, and it goes to false. Good, so, true, false. This one, middle mouse button, click and drag it, and go to other. It's going to have its flip normals attached to the first term of the other geometry. Don't ask. Last one, the condition, middle mouse button, click and drag it over to the material, and go to other. It's going to have its out color. Now you could choose what you want, transparency, ambient color, incandescence. I like incandescence because it makes everything glow. Okay, and last but not least, the material needs a color. That color is the Spider-Man t-shirt. So I'm going to middle mouse button, click and drag this over here and attach it to color. There's my wicked sweet node. You can also find this node recipe on high-end 3D, but they don't show you how to make it. So, compliments of me. So, right-click, find out what this texture is, Lambert 4. Right-click, 
It's signed as existing material, Lambert 4. There we go. Now everything's said and good. So you didn't see any change if, if you want to see that it actually works. See Lambert 1, and here's Lambert 4, Spider-Man. Okay, go ahead and give it a standard render. And voila, wireframes within Maya. All right, enjoy the little tutorial and hope that helps you new modelers out there that want to prove that you didn't drag a 2 million polygon model within Maya and Jeep. Enjoy.